If you could tell all the users out there before they become customers to fix this one thing, just fix this one thing. What would what, what would you tell them to pay attention to and fix now before they become customers or before it becomes a problem? Is there one thing that they should focus on that's overlooked? Oh, <laughs> one thing they should focus on is their uh, bad queries. Bad queries, <laughs> mostly. <huh? laughs> yeah. I would add one. Uh, add index to your RhinoDB tables. Oh, <laughs> primary key. Add, add, primary yeah. key to their prim- <laughs> add primary key to their RhinoDB tables. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Haas Talks Foss. I'm the Haas, head of open source strategy here at Percona, Matt Yankovic. Today, I'm here with uh, Kidar and Eunice from our uh, Percona team, our our managed service team here at Percona. How are you two doing today? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) Um, And so, you know, I, I always like to talk to the folks here at Percona because as the team has gotten so big, I mean, and now we're well over 300 people, it's always hard to get to know everybody. And so just sitting down and understanding what everybody's working on, what they're seeing, it's so valuable. It's so interesting. And so I'm excited to be able to have uh, this uh, discussion with you two. And uh, so so let me start with, with you, Eunice. Uh, you've been here for a while, um, you know, yeah. a, f- a few years now, right? Yeah, three years now. And so three years you know, already completed now, fourth year. Only. Yeah. Oh, fourth year. Yeah. <laughs> that was where the days uh, I've been here quite some time. Yeah. But uh, so you were uh, kind of had a lot of different roles before here. You, you were uh, a bit of a, uh, a sysadmin. You were a bit of a network security person. You were a bit of everything in your background, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I started my career in 2007 uh, with a system and network admin and then from uh, Windows, I switched on to Linux. And then when I came into the Linux, I started using MySQL database. I got interest in MySQL database and then got uh, the total career into MySQL now <laughs> after joining Percona. Yeah. yeah. And so jumping into the Percona side, how was working at Percona different than working outside of per- You know, like how was that transition? Was it was it kind of jarring? Was it interesting? Was it challenging? Mm. Yeah, so uh, remote work is like uh, totally, it it was uh, not new, but still we I had my previous companies who allowed to do work from home for uh, like uh, uh, four days in a month or maybe one week in a month. But uh, working totally remotely is a different thing totally. And uh, like here we can enjoy, like we can stay with my family, we can stay with the family and just uh, keep on working. Uh, There is no, um, like the working in Pakona is totally different uh, than uh, working in an office, right? Um, We are at home and we don't have anything like uh, we we can do whatever we want and we can manage our work we, we can manage our time there is no uh, there is nothing like uh, we can we have to spend more than eight hours in a day and we just want to complete our eight hours and just leave leave it and that that's what i like to from uh, from pakona that uh, we it is like very professional remote working company and it's yeah Oh, very cool. And, and Kidar, you're you're kind of the, the, the younger generation here. You, you've you only been here a few months, right? I'm here for four months only. Four months. Yeah. Four months. Yeah. Four months. So so how did you come to Percona? Like, what, what was your start as? Yeah. Um, actually, I... I um... My start was like I was as a I was working on .NET platforms again, just like uh, you know, said on Microsoft side, and then a, f- a friend just uh, was going on some new adventure, and I was like, okay, let's do something, and I started with PHP, Perl, and all those things, and then somehow I learned MySQL, and that's how when things grew further, I got into MySQL that way. Um, before coming to Percona, I was like at Pythian for like almost nine years. Uh, and obviously, uh, it was like, a, say, first remote job for me. Um, and and I, I found many, many interesting minds there. I say inspiring people. And I learned a lot from there, I guess. And 
I think everything we were using there were a lot of things were Percona, like Percona tools and Percona oh, server. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and mm-hmm. and you read Percona blogs, obviously. Like I, I do not know if you are not reading Percona blog, what are you doing here? So well, uh, I thought of okay, let's level up. Mm-hmm. And as far as I know, a lot of people here in Percona where they're in Python and where they're in other community companies which which are active in community like companies in, which are active in communities so i think it was uh, interesting to you know move here and since i'm here in past four months i i feel i am say as i said it's a level up uh, for me uh, with respect to the work with respect to the culture as well i guess i i did note the cultural difference here and i think i i i, I met uh, really good and say which is very important empathy empathetic uh, people who are who really care about as you know said the work life balance who who do care about that so i think i made a really li- nice choice uh, or, or it was a good decision to move up uh, here at percona so so, so you you could be honest with me though Keith. um yeah. the, the 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 thing that you really wanted to do was come work with the hoss right like all yeah. those videos <laughs> for the last couple of years all of the podcasts you were like i got to get on that not like that. I actually changed my um, line from Microsoft to on to to the open source community uh, sites just to meet you. Like I was destined oh, to meet you. Just That's to, why. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you are the same guy. Here, who it, it is. It is good. It, it, thank you. I, I knew. I knew I had some <laughs> responsibility for this. So thank yeah. you. For I, I, so I if you are in Microsoft, sure. <laughs> I would say if you are in Microsoft, Oracle, any other technology, come. Join my skill, <laughs> come come at Percona, <laughs> and your life will change. <laughs> yes, there you go. So, um, so you've been in this uh, industry, Kida, for for quite some time as well. And you know, I, I'm curious, and and I'll start with you, and then we'll we'll, we'll ask you just the same question. Uh, what are you seeing on a regular basis uh, as you're you're helping to to maintain these uh, sometimes massive MySQL environments? What are the normal common problems that you run into? What are some of the challenges that uh, users are facing nowadays? Hmm. Well, that's a question I would need to think about a bit. But so, so you want to see... make Eunice answer first, and then you can come back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can think a bit, and then I can say that. But <laughs> it, it's like, see, on a day-to-day basis, a very regular issues are about the way they have configured, or say, the users have configured their servers, mm. which are very basic things. Uh, then probably they have underestimated their traffic, probably their developers, which were not really efficient in writing their queries or even designing their tables, which are so mm. many, so much basic things, which are like, uh, say, one-on-ones, uh, one-on-ones of MySQL, which one should know really. And when those things reaches to production, those are the things which really reduces your performances. So those are the issues we see more more often uh, which are related to performance uh, and then we go forward from then then we decide upon okay now you have a uh, performing servers now we think about how to get a step further okay let's think about high availability think about monitoring obviously that comes first but if it is not at all performant what will you do about it then we will we check about their status is how they are working and so I think the basic issues comes most often. And then when the work goes further uh, in the line, the way we work here is about reviewing their systems and their architecture. And then we go ahead and decide how we uh, suggest our client uh, with the best practices or whatever running in the industry right now, which are tool we are using and h- how to go ahead with that. Yeah, and so, so you, you start with, Fixing the problems that exist, but then enhancing the overall platform um, over time to bring it more into line with some of the best practices. That's right. Yes. Okay. And, and, and Eunice, what, what are you seeing from a, a customer perspective, a user perspective that's common issues? So uh, whenever the client comes in or uh, get onboarded uh, in Pakona, we most uh, the, the first priority is to... Uh, stabilize their environment. Uh, so we review the servers. As Kedar said, that we will uh, review the servers, review what problems they are facing, how how the traffic is, and uh, during the peak hours, how how stable their server remains, and if there is any problem, 
uh, in the queries in optimizing their servers, um, like optimizing MySQL. And we, we collect all the information in the initial stage and then we suggest what all um, improvements that can be done. Um, so once the client is uh, once the client client is stabilized, then we 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 recommend them for the improvement further. Like if if we need to maintain high availability uh, in their environment, how, how what all we can add in their environment, and then how the backups needs to be there, uh, whether it should whether it needs to be uploaded offline for more safety um, during a crash or something like dr or they need a dr side or staging testing environment then we keep on recommending and making their environment more healthier mm -hmm. so this is, is there one we, thing though like if you could tell all the users out there before they become customers to fix this one thing just fix this one thing what would what, what would you tell them to pay attention to and fix now before they become customers or before it becomes a problem is there one thing that they should focus on that's overlooked Oh, uh, <laughs> one thing they should focus on is their uh, bad queries. Bad queries, <laughs> mostly. <huh? laughs> yeah. I would add one: uh, add index to your RhinoDB tables. <laughs> primary key. Add, add primary yeah. key to their prim <laughs> add primary key to their RhinoDB tables. <laughs> well, so in, both of you can answer this, and whichever one feels comfortable. And here's the thing that I've experienced more often than not: you mentioned about performance issues. You mentioned about scalability. Um, you, you know, and, and Kidar, you, you mentioned about like the design side of things. Um, when you do have a problem in the design side, it is much more difficult to fix that than if it is a configuration issue or if it's a, uh, you know, uh, adding a new tool necessarily to the environment um, because you have to fix the code. And that means you're going to have to rewrite things. If you have to increase the memory allocation or, you know, tweak the TCP buffer or the disk IO or things like that, those often can either be done live or they might require a, a restart, but it's a single restart. Whereas when you have a design change, if you're going to redesign your tables, if you're going to rewrite all of your queries, that requires all of the, the teams to work together to make that happen. It's no longer a, I'm going to make this adjustment. I'm going to, to focus on that. So in my opinion, like I've always looked at the design side of the database as probably the most important, because if you get that wrong, it's so hard to change it later. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, so is that something that you see often too? Like how long does it yeah. take when you find that design issue, how long does it take people to, uh, to, to generally fix that so the database design issue if um, we have not uh, come across this uh, situation much but i think if if this design problem is there then it will surely take more time to solve because we need to analyze the whole database normalize it means if uh, if there is anything duplication or not um, getting stored properly or the queries while pulling are taking longer times because of the database design then we need to fix that design first and it will surely take a time because if the database is not properly designed your application won't function properly right so and uh, there will be of course a downtime if the database design has problems and then for fixing that again it will require another downtime so that will be like uh creating um like totally fixing it from A to Z, it will be required if the design problem is there to understand it and then fix it. Yeah. No, I mean, like, yeah, d definitely a lot longer. And I mean, you know, I mean, there's different levels of design issues, like obviously schema design or, you know, adding columns, uh, you know, is, 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 a, is an impactful thing. But I mean, also design of the queries and, you know, indexes is also critically important. I mean, I think nowadays people really are looking for three things, right? They want the scalability. So they want to know that if they have 100,000 users, it's going to work. They want it always available, right? Like there's no downtime. You can't have downtime. Uh, like name one website that can have downtime, none, although they take it. Uh, and then they want their data to be protected and secure, right? Like, so if you're, if you're available and scalable and secure, I think most people are happy. So... 
Oh, go ahead, Kedar. You were going to say something? <laughs> Yeah, uh, since the invention of cloud, like say Google Cloud or AWS Cloud, like their technology, which has uh, which which has um, like allowed opportunity for people to stop thinking about scaling problems and just try to develop their water coming through their mind as a product, and then just give that and like give that an incredible amount of uh, resources like they do not care really as long as you're ready, you're ready to pay you can just scale it out and you can add things on the top of it but as you said like the design issue which 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 is not only up to the database side it also belongs to the application side and if it is not thoroughly tasted beforehand uh, moving to the production and then oh i forgot we also needed an, a date time column so that we can you know update on based on that that will take you back to the development cycle, then the UAT, then the staging, and so forth, so on. So that's like that's going to waste a lot of time there. Uh, so yeah, I yeah, just want definitely. to that. Well, I'm gonna try something with you two because I a lot of times I have one person on, but now I I, I have I have I have two. So you get to be a guinea pig to try something new. Mm. Yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> Kidar, what's your favorite MySQL tool? MySQL client. What? Well, which one was that? What? The MySQL client. The MySQL client. Okay. Okay. Eunice, what's your favorite MySQL tool? PT online schema change. <laughs> PT online schema and... change. Okay. So I mean, like the MySQL client. I don't know if you can consider that a tool. Well, it's it's an application. It's not the server, right? <laughs> it's not the server. Um, but but I think that you know, like from a win perspective, I, I would think Eunice's answer is, is much more solid with the spirit of oh, being sure. a, a winning tool. Okay, I, I yeah. was just going for the controversy, really. Oh, you were, yeah, you were going for the the, the controversy. Okay, so um, you know if you're going to back up a large database, okay, large terabyte size, um, how are you going to back it up, Kedar? Extra backup. Using what? Like, are you going to do differentials? You know, how, how are you going to you know, do point in time recovery? What, what are you going to use? Ah, okay. Yeah. I mean, like, if it's really, really large, then probably I would do a full backup once a week and then incremental backups thereafter. Okay. Eunice, a, 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 any response? Anything you want to add to that? Yeah. So, uh, so the, uh, the, the very best tool available is extra backup for the big database. And uh, of course, the full backup is needed at some point of time. And then we can do incremental for a few days. And uh, then uh, for point in time recovery, we can keep uh, taking a bin logs backup. And uh, so if, if there is anything point in time recovery needed, then we can use the bin logs backup as well. And yeah, that, that should be good. I think the logical logical backup will unnecessarily cause a long time so we won't actually opt for a logical backup okay if okay. it is a terrible idea okay good good answer so um so now i'm, I'm going to ask you have to build high availability are you going to build pxc or are you going to use orchestrator and async replication yeah. So that depends totally upon the application. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Kedar, if you want go to, you, 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 no, you yeah. started units. Go, go for it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, I can, I can do that. Uh, so it depends totally on the application usage. For example, like uh, if uh, if the application has a long running updates or um, any any like long running deletes updates anything, so this will cause a problem if we are using PXE. So. Uh, choosing in between PXC and uh, choosing in between asynchronous and synchronous replication is uh, just a matter means what you want actually what you, how is how is your application functioning so uh, long running updates for example will take a long time to finish on the first node and if we are using PXC it will it will again run on the another all all the nodes for example if three nodes cluster is there the two nodes will again run that same updates and for example, if first node took two minutes and the other two nodes will take two minutes for that two minutes, the cluster will just go uh, 
do the flow control right so because of uh, that the pxc for for long running updates application the pxc will not be suited so they will always try to choose asynchronous replication so this uh, long running queries are coming mostly from the reporting server not from the application actually some people prefer to uh, try to uh, build their replication and then try to use the analytics server or some uh, server in the below chain like for example in uh, they have set up asynchronous replication and then try to run the long running queries in the below chain and then there is another chain going on so depends upon the usage of how the application will be for example if there are no long running queries um, i would prefer with uh, pxc as well so because it is all it, it it is also a good solution of high availability Kidar, do you agree? Do you disagree? I, I don't di disagree with him. Uh, oh, I can so, find something you guys disagree on. Yeah, yeah, we do not really. You cannot make us fight. Like, <laughs> he, he is an old old ship here, right? So I need to learn from no, no, no. his, <laughs> his way of working. If, if, if I am wrong, then please correct me. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I completely agree with him. Seriously. Uh, there is an additional advantage that PXC gives us with, the, with respect to the consistency. Like, let's say if some table is dirty, like, say, inconsistent, maybe... Uh, Maybe there is some data that is missing or some update that fails. It just discards it and recreates it. That is something that intelligence I really like. So you don't really need to, like an asynchronous replication, you just throw something at the replica and expect it to pick it up. And then you get duplicate key error and then all the mess around it. And then you go ahead and use Unis's favorite. No, I, I probably that's a second favorite tool for Unis. PT <laughs> checksum, PT table checksum, and then the PT table sync. You, you use yeah. them and you try to sync them. And if it is large, oh, okay. So, PXC is smart enough to, you know, discard the naughty things out of the cluster, let it rebuild and get it a fresh back. So I think he, he has very well explained the solution there. Okay. Yeah, if... Okay. So are you ready for it? What, what was the <laughs> best release of MySQL in your opinion, your favorite release? Do you have a favorite release? Like, like when it reached four, four, one, five, one. Five seven. Eight. Five, uh, I five. think the five, best five. one was five point seven. <laughs> Most that was your favorite. Okay, five, no, so, five, so five, five was uh, very good for InnoDB, and then but there are a lot of improvements in five point seven. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I think I, I'll say five point zero because that's where I started. <laughs> uh, ah, but, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think uh, the time when they introduced online schema change, that was really uh, sort of uh, interesting when they made InnoDB as a default and yeah. uh, engine and uh, introduced online schema change. So Great. Okay. Well, see, that was what I was going to try. It was just rapid fire kind of like topics thrown off the top <laughs> of my head. We call it the Percona popcorn hour because it's just like popcorn popping out of my head. I don't know what I'm going to ask. Think of it. it. It is interesting the way you prepare this and handle this. What, just by randomly thinking of things and then throwing it out there and see what happens? Yes, yes. <laughs> my, my, my preparation? Yes, we all have our methods. Um, you never know where it's going to go. You never know. You could tell me something and I might spend the <laughs> entire hour on just the one thing, right? I might spend two hours on it. I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know where this is going to go. You just never know. Um, but, you know, both of you have an upcoming talk um, or uh, depending on when this podcast is released, it might have been a previous talk of, you know, we're recording this before we go to live, uh, but we do release them, uh, you know, once a week. And it's on using Orchestrator and using uh, Proxy SQL uh, with uh, asynchronous replication. So we talked a little bit about the difference between when you might choose async and PXC, which is a good segue into this conversation. Uh, so I am curious, uh, you, you know, but prior to Proxy SQL being there, there was MHA, there was MMM, there was all these different tools, all with an M in the title, uh, you know, to handle uh, some of the the, the uh, processing and the, the the routing of queries and the routing of uh, traffic. Um, you, you know, what's your experience been with Proxy SQL, have you used it for more than just orchestrator? Um, you know, what are some of the things that you might have seen it used for out there? So, Proxy SQL, right? Uh, so, we were talking before about scalability, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
scalability like proxy sql will support it very nicely proxy sql is again a very good tool for uh, like if we point the application we don't have a uh, point application to proxy sql it will automatically split the queries with read and write as well uh, so in in terms of scalability um, for example like if we are uh, using a uh, uh, proxy sql in our application then what what whenever we want to grow our reader servers we can always uh, we can always add the keep adding the servers and the reader servers will keep on increasing just like we do in rdsa uh, and uh, aurora like increasing the readers and um, that that is again one advantage and uh, then splitting the queries uh, on the basis of query digest for example if some there is a long running queries you would just want to put on that server you can do it um, these are all advantages of using a proxy sql and i think whenever uh, i it 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 also uh, very nicely integrate with uh, orchestrator as well when we do a failover with orchestrator um it automatically picks up like our proxy sql is configured to automatically change the writer to the read write server and it automatically chooses um the new server as read writeable and put it in the host group and so the writes will go on that server and then reads will come start coming on the old master so we don't need to make the changes manually in the application and we we are just only pointing to proxy sql right so that is also the main advantage that we don't have to change anything in any configuration in application yeah so it's 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 really helping to route the queries to the right place and you can define yeah. what you're going to do once those that traffic comes in where to send yeah. it how to handle it uh, adjust it, make modifications to it if you need to. Now, okay. you mentioned Orchestrator, and Kidar, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, for those who are listening or watching who don't know what Orchestrator is, maybe give us like the 10 second what is Orchestrator? Well, Orchestrator, uh, you can assume it as a, not assume it, it is a replication topology manager. Uh, once configured, it will let you visualize actually uh, very well what is there in your environment, master replicas there. It will allow you to uh, very easily migrate them. I mean, uh, change the, it will allow you to change the temp topology just by drag of your mouse and it will take care of uh, the rest. It will also take care of a lot, um, changing the, um, stopping the replica the demoted rep master uh, becoming the new replica and make it, it make it read only and make sure that the new master that has come up as read write uh, enabled so that the traffic can continue growing moving um, while you work at it so that's that's orchestrator for you yeah so really the, the combination of proxy sql and orchestrator are really devops for dbas really it's automation of you know, your failovers, automation of your query routing, automation of some of those normally back-end activities that require a lot of work. Yeah, that's right. It allows you to, as you said about proxy SQL, it allows you to integrate its hook scripts to perform whatever additional changes you want to perform after a failover is detected or whatever keys or options are there. So you can take your actions accordingly. It also nicely get integrated with the console and and one more thing which i'm forgetting but it it, it communicates uh, fluent uh, flawlessly with them and populates the information with it def based on the defined key values pairs and above all it is also sort of um, it, it has also implemented the raft protocol cluster so that uh, it is also that tool itself is also say highly available like if one orchestrator dies you do not have to worry about your topology management it's still there it is uh, being managed by two other like if say three is a minimum um, yeah. yeah yeah excellent so. well and so you you two are giving this talk um, which is at Percona live um, if Percona live has not happened we encourage you to come out and check it out. And if it has, uh, there should be a video uh, that's available for you to, to to stream that if you are interested in more details on that. But uh, Kidar and, and Jonas, uh, I wanted to thank you for coming out, chatting with us, telling us a little bit about the, the DBA team here at Percona, sharing some of your experiences, um, answering my crazy, wacky, top of the popcorn questions. You know, always happy to have uh, folks on and chat with me about whatever topics uh, they're interested in or whatever pops into my mind. You never know. 
Uh, might not even be database related in the future. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I wanted to thank you both for hanging out with me today. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, you thank you. All you right. Thank nice you. Yeah, it was nice talking to you. Uh, wonderful. Wow, what a great episode that was. We really appreciate you coming and checking it out. We hope that you love open source as much as we do. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to us on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And of course, tune in to next week's episode. We really appreciate you coming and talking open source with us.